Welcome back to another LP Gallery tutorial. Today, we're going to be creating some ribbons and bows to tie your projects together. For example, you may be creating some PowerPoint certificates, which a lot of people do, and you'd like to tie it together with maybe a nice little first prize or congratulation type ribbon. So here's something very easily done. We can make them complex like this or make them a little more simpler like this. And again, they're always done the same way as our other PowerPoint projects. You start with one shape, you duplicate it, and you rotate it into the shape you need, and you get something that looks like this. Very complex looking, but very simple to do. And here we have some bows. You can make plain bows, or you can make complex looking bows like this with fancy gold trim and some fancy uh, writing on them. And again, you just create one, duplicate it, rotate it into shape, and you get a mass of these, and they look complex, but they're very simple to use. And of course, lots of our clip art that we try to create here we try to create it so they look realistic we don't want cartoon type clip art we want something that looks a little more realistic so you can put them in your slideshows and your or your printed powerpoint projects and they will look very realistic so we're going to start off by doing one like this and then we'll make one like this and again we're going to follow the principle of create once uh, duplicate rotate and build it up into a complex looking object but really, it's a very simple thing to do. So, let's get started. Okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll make one like this. We'll do blue instead of a silver. I think we'll go blue to gold. So I'm going to use a trapezoid shape. You could use a lot of different shapes. I just think the trapezoid works the best for what we want. And I'm going to get rid of the outline. Now I'm going to apply a gradient. And you get a default gradient. I'm going to pull the middle stop off so we can see what's going on. So we have dark to light. Now I'm going to rotate this because I actually want the wider end to the top. Okay. Now I want my grading going this way, this direction, like a, a west to east direction, not a north to south direction. So I'm going to change my direction here. So I'm going to click here and which one's going to work for me? That doesn't work for me because you can see the light is to the right and it's showing the dark here. So that gets kind of confusing. So let's try the other one and that one works. So just remember when you apply a gradient and you rotate a shape, your stops won't necessarily match what you see here. They might be reversed. So it gets a little confusing when you start adding stops. So what you want to do is make sure that the color is flowing in the direction as you see in the stops here. Okay, so that's perfect. Now I'm going to click here and I'm going to use my theme color. So I'm going to take this blue here and I'm going to actually make it darker. So I'm going to go to about a minus 75. I'm going to click here and I'm going to choose the same theme color and I'm going to make that about a minus 75 also. And then I'm going to click in the middle and just choose a nice lighter color like that and I have that. The problem is when you have the light in the middle like this, you get something that's more cylinder shape, more like a tube. And uh, what these are going to do when you start rotating these, they're going to look more like little tubes rather than actually folded cloth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my stop here, the light stop. I'm going to just move it more to the edge. And I'm going to drag the dark ones out a bit so we have a little more shadow. And you can see that gives me more of a fold. Maybe I'll do the same here and just drag that out a bit. And so it gives you a little bit more of, of a fold rather than something that looks cylindrical like a tube. Okay, now the next important thing is to line it up to my guides. So you'll notice I have guides, and they're going to be very important for what we want to do. So I'm going to rotate this, and I'm going to get the edge right here. Perfect smack. So I'm going to get the edge perfectly aligned to that. Now I'm going to make a duplicate, and all I have to do is rotate. And you'll see by doing it this way, I can actually get a nice circular shape very similar to this, just by doing this, without having to draw circles and, and trying to uh, follow a circle. So here we go. And you can see it looks like folds. And I'm going to rotate that. They don't have to be perfect, just close enough. And I'm going to rotate this one. Now this guy here is going to be very important. This guy actually has to be flat, like this. This one actually has to be like this. Just like this one has to be lined up to the vertical, this one has to be lined up to the horizontal. Okay, so I'm going to uh, move it up just a bit, like this. And I'm going to group this. And I want this to be perfect aligned to the guide, so I'm going to hold my shift key down, and I'm going to just stretch this so it's uh, 
perfect line to the guide just like that. Now all I have to do is take this one and I just rotate it and line everything up to the guides just like that. And sometimes you got to snap. Sometimes you have to use your arrow keys to line things up because they kind of snap. And let's take this one and let's rotate that. And let's take this one and let's rotate that one. Okay, so you can see how important the guides were to matching things up. I'm just going to nudge them in there and we have that. So the first part is done. The next step is to group these together. And now we're going to create the gold band. So all I have to do now is duplicate this and make it smaller. Now again, you're going to see the importance of the guides. I want to make sure that these snap right to the guides so they're all lined up. And that's perfect. So everything lines up perfect to the guides. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just change the color. And I'm going to change the color of one of these. So I'm going to click one of these. And what I have to do is just choose a color here. I'll stick to the nice gold here. I'm going to click this. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make this a minus 75 so they match. I'm going to click on that one. And I'm going to use a dark yellow there. And I'm going to make that a minus 75. So again, we, the shading will be the same. And I'm going to click here. And you can see the advantage of sticking to theme colors. If you stick to the theme colors, you just move across. So I can see that's the same shade as that. That's the same brightness. So I'm going to click on that. I have that. Now once I have that, all I have to do is grab my Format Painter, double click on it, and just go like this. And they're all done. I want another blue circle here. So I want to go blue, gold, and blue. Well, that's no problem. I just take this one, I duplicate it, make it smaller. And again, line it up to my guides, which is perfect. And you can see what I have there. So now I have a gold stripe. And let's say I want a second gold stripe. Well, I would just take that one, duplicate it, and make that one smaller. And line it up to my guides, and I have something like this. So let's say I wanted another blue. So I'm going to take this one, and I make that one smaller and line it up here and line up the guide so you can see what we have here is we have blue gold blue gold and then you can of course play with these as much as you want now i'm going to stretch this gold maybe you want the gold band to be wider and you have something like that so by just adding them uh, making them bigger or smaller and stretching them out you can get a lot of variety into the stripes that you have on these shapes okay so this part is done and now what we have to do is we have to put uh, a center part so let's go here and uh, let's grab a circle and let's just make a circle like this. We'll drop it in there and let's see, we'll make it a little bit smaller. The control and shift allows you to scale things from the center. So that's what I'm doing with control and shift. So let's just say I want to make this uh, a solid color. Maybe I want to make it uh, the yellow, have that. And I'm going to remove the outline. And I think what I'll do is just give it a, a 3D of some type. And there it is. So you have something very much like that, and that looks like the center of your ribbon. Maybe I'll just stretch it out just a bit bigger. Again, I'm going to hold my shift and my control so they center out, and I have that. And to make it look a little more realistic, I think what I'll do is just drop a little shadow on it, maybe the center shadow like this, and I'll take this down, and it just tends to make it look a little more realistic. Okay, so there's your outside of the ribbon. The next part, of course, is to do the nice little stem parts here. The long stem ribbon here two ways you could either have them folded just like this or you can just have them plain like this so um, we'll start off with a folded one and that's easy enough so all i got to do is take one of these i'm going to copy that and i'm going to paste it and i'm going to rotate it and i'll just stretch i'll just have it straightened out kind of like this okay so i have that one and um, what i need is a gold so i'm going to click on that one copy it Paste it, and I'm going to rotate it and straighten it out. And we'll go like this. So we'll try to kind of match this so I have a stripe here. And I'll just stretch it out just a bit. And I'll just take this and then I'll just 
duplicate that one and stretch that one out and it kind of closely matches that one okay so we have that we just have to group that and of course all we have to do now is just duplicate this so we just duplicate it and we duplicate it and we duplicate it so however long you want it you're just duplicating it Now we have something like that. Now let's say you want to have a nice point like this. Well, that's easy enough to do. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to ungroup all these. Okay. Now I'm going to grab a little triangle. I'll take this one, and I'm going to draw a nice little triangle like this. And I'm going to kind of line it up there. Remove the outline. And I'm going to use the old cookie cutter. So we're going to be cutting things out here. And something like this. And remember, when you're cutting shapes, they have to be bigger than what you want. This has to actually be larger than any of these to make sure we get a good cut. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this. You're going to see the importance of copying this. So I'm going to copy it. Okay, so I'm going to grab the blue in the back. I'm going to grab the triangle too. I'm going to go to format, go to my shapes, and subtract. Now you see I have to do the same to this. So I, uh, Because I copied the triangle, I can now paste it. It'll go in the exact same spot. So I'm going to have to click this stripe, and I'm going to do that, and go to format, and subtract, and then paste it again, and take that stripe, and we'll select that one, and we go merge shapes and we subtract and you get something like that so there it is so now i'm going to regroup it and we have something like this and then if you want a second one you just make a second one and if you want to rotate them you rotate them okay so we'll take these two and we'll send them to the back and then you have something that looks like that and then you could take maybe a drop shadow if you wanted that one. So this, since this one is on top, let's say you apply a drop shadow like that. And you have it like this. So it kind of looks like something's going on to top of something else. You can take this outside blue circle and you can do the same thing. You can apply a nice drop shadow. You can put a drop shadow down or something like that. And it kind of looks a little bit like this. It look, kind of looks three-dimensional. But you have all kinds of nice stripes on it, and you've been able to carry the theme through into the stem parts here. Okay, now what if you want something more like this? Maybe you want a straight one. Well, let's go and uh, use our famous little trapezoid shape that works really good for what we want. We'll take this one, and we're going to move our outline. I think what I'm going to do is just select one of these colors. I'm going to bore that color. I'm going to use my format painter. I'm going to apply it here. And we have something like this. Maybe I'll rotate it so it's not so obvious like that. Perfect. Now, my stripes. I don't think I'll do uh, two stripes. I think I'll just do one stripe on this one. So I'm going to duplicate this. And I think what I'll do is just squish it down a bit. And I'll put it down like that. And I'm going to click on my little gold shapes here. I'm going to use my Format Painter. And I'm going to apply it to this. And we have that. Let's see. I've got this is 190 degree. I think I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to make it to 190 degree. And we have something that kind of looks like that. Give it a nice point. We know how to do that. We go here. We grab a nice little triangle. We draw our little triangle again. And we have to move our outline. It doesn't have to be quite that big. Something like that is perfect and you know exactly what we're going to do so I'm going to uh, copy that and take this and we'll take the triangle and we'll go to format and we'll subtract we're going to paste that back we're going to take our stripe and we're going to take that and we're going to take that one and we're going to go here and we're going to subtract and you have that so there it is you have that now so we just take that and regroup it and we have that so I'll just let me remove one of these and now you have one of these now you can 
stretch these out as big as you want, or you can make them as wide as you want, and you have something like that. So now you got one of each. So which way do you want to do it? So you could have more plain, or you could have it fancy. And that's how you do a simple, nice ribbon. In the next video, we're going to show you how to create bows like these. So you can make things simple, more complicated, even more complicated. You can make thick bows, thin bows. So there's all kinds of ways to make these bows. And again, like the previous one, they all start off with one shape that's uh, given a nice gradient, rotated, grouped together, and in no time you have a complex looking piece of realistic looking clip art done very simply. So we hope you enjoyed this video and we hope you can stick around to catch the next one. So thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next video.